I'm not going to help you kill yourself. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Self-surgery has been tried before. Well, then at least allow us to handle the tricky parts. Mm -hmm. No. Episode 10, I had no idea what was going to happen, and I was screaming at the script. We really end the, the season under the circus tent, and Thackeray is the ringmaster. Gentlemen. Please direct your attention to the center of the ring where I will amaze you with a feat so extraordinary it has never been seen before by you or anyone else in the history of mankind. Stephen had that idea that that would be a great thing to build up to, and it's based on fact. Evan O'Neill Kane was about to have an appendectomy. As the procedure was about to start, he said, I'm going to do it. And he did it all for that same reason that Thackeray did. I will prove today that a man can be operated on with no general anesthesia, and that that same man can perform the operation himself. In his mind, there's no other choice. And all we can do is sit back and watch. To see that great man sort of reduced to a half-naked, dying patient. Zimberg having a front row seat. He wants to see what the final act is going to bring. A high wire walker is only thrilling to watch if there's no net below to save him from disaster. Evan O'Neill Kane wanted to live. I'm not 100% sure Thackeray wanted to live. It seems there are several necrotic areas which will need resecting. Much worse than originally assumed. We were talking about sort of how we wanted to play the end of it. Clive said, I'd love to say this line. This is it. And Michael said, why don't we put it at the end? That would be the last thing he would say. This is all we are. It was you who killed Spate. Neely. You who murdered your own father. Henry seemed protective of his sister and worried about his family. And when you start to put the pieces together, you go, well, of course it's Henry. I mean, he seemed like a nice guy, didn't he? Didn't see it coming at all. It's absolutely shocking and unbelievable that he's kept up this front. How could you? How could I not? He's someone who has always had an ulterior motive to everything he's done. He'd gone soft in his old age, but not so soft that he wouldn't have kicked me out of the business and written me out of his will like that. We came in and Stephen just said, I've got this idea that instead of shooting the scene in, in this one room, maybe you come into the room and Charlie just starts backing you up to the top of the stairs. She said to Charlie, I'm going to lean back. And the only thing that's going to be keeping me from tumbling down the stairs is me in your hand. And so in that scene, she's leaning back and she's playing the fear of that moment and Charlie's got her life in his hands. You will do exactly as I say, or you won't make it back to your carriage. You're a monster. Could he really push his sister down the stairs without caring? And the fact is, you have to sometimes lose your family in order to save the business. It's all in the pursuit of power and money. Go. <laughs> and I see Lucy come up the stairs and emerge as this very duplicitous, perfect match for the new Henry. I am so glad you're here. So glad you saw things my way. They're gonna ride off into the sunset towards Newport and live a life of deceit, probably. Tell Philip. I expect all the show Walters up to the house for Independence Day. The idea of remaining a dutiful wife and keeping my mouth shut is just not something that I can do. She's running. There's no one to turn to anymore. What about Australia? The options available to a woman in that era, even if you're a wealthy woman, even if you're part of the establishment, you, you, there is a limit to the power you have. Australia is the one place at that time where a woman would be allowed to become a doctor. That's how I'm ending the story. Rather than follow Europe, I want to lead them for a change. Bring eugenics to the continent. Eugenics is headed towards the Nazi regime, purifying the human race. And who better to deliver that message than a strong, handsome man such as yourself? For him to start pursuing this, the seeds are all there. And it was kind of the most natural thing. Just in case we're wondering how you need to feel about my character, Gallinger learns about eugenics takes the message to Europe, specifically to Germany. So in the world of the Nick, Gallinger is somehow responsible for the Holocaust. You'd be the traveling prophet of eugenics, an evangelist for the preservation of the human race. The fire is being ruled an accident. 
Hmm. This is Barrow's high point. And he's been on his heels and he's been a winner and a loser and a winner and a loser. And right now, he's on top. He's now living the life he's always wanted, except he's got this annoying rash showing up on his hand. I have an x-ray done. Get to the bottom of it. They're miraculous. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've had dozens of them. I have an unhealthy fascination with the x-ray machine. We start to see these melanomas appear on my hands. I don't think the future for Mr. Barrow is a bright one after all. I love you, Rose Dolan. I'd be honored if you'd be my wife. I think there's something really beautiful in Cleary and Harriet. And we now know that Cleary came up with a scam to get the whole thing started. You manipulated a nun's excommunication. She was a fucking abortionist! That started a lot of conversations with the writers about what kind of person he really is deep down. How sociopathic is he? Or if he was just an idiot who, who didn't know what else to do and made a mistake. Yeah, but I thought it was a fantastic twist. I think nobody would have trusted the mushiness of the story. I think it gave it a little bite. Even though he's engineered this whole thing and it's just evil in a certain regard, that moment when she shows that she has the ring on her finger is so touching. You're so happy for them. The end of the scene, it was supposed to be this sort of joyous pick her up and spin her around, hey, we're getting married kind of thing. And in the moment, Chris Sullivan, he just reached for her hand. It was really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like me gone, I need another vocation. Algernon's got to find a way to make himself useful. Are there even any patients left on that board? By all accounts, it was a failed experiment. It's worth further study. I owe him at least that. And for all the tragedy that Algernon has faced, for him to sit down and talk to this last patient of Thackeray's in this inebriate ward, it's not only keeping Thackeray's dream alive, but it's in a way it's keeping Algernon's dream alive. He finds a little glimmer of hope. There is still a place for him, and then he needs to keep fighting. I'm having bad dreams.